there are two ways to look at this question. The first is trying to understand how pacifiers could affect breastfeeding. The second is to look at studies where some babies were given a passy, others not, and compare the length of breastfeeding. Let's start with how. You might have heard of nipple confusion. It is the idea that artificial nipples require a different sucking motion than the breast. Once a baby has learned the wrong technique, he will not latch correctly at the breast. An incorrect latch can lead to painful nipples for the mom. In these circumstances, even moms motivated to breastfeed are more likely to stop or at least supplement with formula. The issue with this logic, however, is that if a baby would confuse a nipple with a pacifier, then she might as well be confused by her own thumb. But that can't be, as baby can suck their thumb in the womb and still enjoy breastfeeding afterwards. Another hypothesis for how pacifiers can interfere with breastfeeding is through a molecule produced when sucking. It is called CCK and it makes baby feel full and sleepy. Some people hence fear that if a baby sucks a lot on a pacifier, he will not feel as hungry. While it is true that some CCK can be produced by sucking, most of it is produced during feeding. The levels of CCK produced by sucking alone is normally too low to keep the baby feel full and sleepy. The best hypothesis for how pacifiers may interfere with breastfeeding relates to milk supply. Every time baby sucks on mom's breast, be it for feeding or comfort, the milk production is stimulated. The more the baby sucks, the more stimulation occurs and the easier the milk production becomes. If comfort sucking occurs on the passy, the breast gets less stimulation and breastfeeding becomes more challenging. While this argument is very convincing, it is basically offering us a spectrum of possible impact on breastfeeding, depending on how much comfort sucking happens on the passy and whether it happens when the breast is already well stimulated or not. It is therefore fair to assume that a pacifier given a lot during the days after birth will be more likely to affect milk production than a pacifier given for brief moments to a 4 month old. Now, let's see if pacifiers have impacted breastfeeding in practice. A study published in the journal Pediatrics in 1999 found that babies who were given a pacifier tended to stop exclusive breastfeeding earlier than those who did not. Another study conducted in Brazil and published in 2017 showed that babies using pacifiers tended to adopt a less favorable position during breastfeeding. However, neither studies were randomized, meaning that the parents decided themselves whether or not to give a pacifier. So it is very possible that parents who decided not to give a pacifier were also the most committed to breastfeeding in the first place. It is therefore not possible to conclude that the pacifiers were causing these unfavorable outcomes. There was another study published in Pediatrics in 2003, which was randomized. It looked at the impact of introducing a pacifier in the first five days after birth. They did find that such early introduction was detrimental to breastfeeding. However, another study published in the same journal in 2013 found the exact opposite. When restricting a newborn's access to pacifiers, parents were more likely to use formula in addition to or instead of breastfeeding. Long story short, there is no consensus. Researchers reviewed all the best studies available in 2012 and concluded that there simply wasn't enough evidence to conclude that pacifiers impacted breastfeeding. When results of scientific studies vary so much, it is often because there are other factors that impact the pacifier breastfeeding relationship. My hypothesis is that pacifiers will have absolutely no impact on some babies' ability to breastfeed, but will be detrimental to others. How do you know in which category you are? A study published in 2017 in the Journal of Lactation showed that for mothers who were at high risk of postpartum depression, a pacifier might actually help them continue breastfeeding. More research is needed to prove this and find out what other factors are important, but it seems likely that the impact of a pacifier on breastfeeding really depends on the baby, the mother and their circumstances. It's all good to know, but what is the conclusion? In my opinion, 
When science is inconclusive, the best way forward is for parents to observe their baby a lot and weigh the pros and cons for their unique child. Thumbs up if you think parenting should be informed by science and subscribe if you're loving the journey.